Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's Everyday Survival Dude. We have a guest here today, Blackie Thomas. We are out here at his um, Geneva State Forest get-together, and we're going to talk about haversacks, what we carry, how we set up, and why we choose the way that we choose those things. Blackie, you want to go ahead and kick it off? Sure. My haversack, I want a haversack roughly. You notice I've got my knife on the strap. Now, this will be either on my belt or the strap, depending. If I'm doing a job where I'm really not doing what's in here much, I'm out here to do something else, say fishing. I'll put my knife on here so this is a unit to grab. So it goes with me, but I'm going to take it off and put it right here while I'm doing other events, or etc. But it's all together. If I'm not, this will be on my belt. And it should be on my belt if I'm actively doing stuff out in the woods. Let me take that off right quick. So, I like a haversack that's roughly that big. Now, some guys say that's too small, but you can get too big a haversack. Agreed. I like, my mindset is I gather the gear that I want to carry. It covers my fire kit, covers my cordage needs, covers my navigation, self-rescue needs, and any kind of self-aid, etc. And then have a little bit of room to throw in a little bit of craft stuff for this event. So I'm going to carry a carving knife or a hook knife or compass and map. Whatever I'm, this activity I'm doing is. Got a little bit of room. But a lot of guys will get these, that big a haversack and it becomes a burden to carry it. I like to carry my haversack tucked up under my ribs up tight if I'm moving in rough country. I want to be able to take my arm and grip it. So if I have to hop across something, I can grip it. I can also spin it around behind me to be out of the way. But if I come up to an obstacle I gotta jump over, I wanna pull it up and grip it with my arm so it's not gonna and maybe throw me off balance and hook it. But that's the basic idea of the habits like the size that I want. I carry in my top flat my quick grabs. And this is gonna be I carry my bushcraft zip ties in here. So I know that's nothing but I carry an eating utensil. I carry a backup blade. I got one of the Viking sharpening stones so I can keep my blades maintained in the field. I have a repair spool that's got a supply of duct tape, sewing thread, and fishing thread, and I got an emergency fishing kit in that. I carry just a simple compass because the only navigation I'm gonna need to do out here is not walk in a circle. Before I go out there, I box myself in to realize Okay, what's north of here, west of here, south of here, east of here. So if I get turned around, I need to know that if I walk south, I'm coming back to the road to come back to my car. No matter what happens, just head south, and that'll make sure I don't walk in a circle. Okay. Then I have some more bushcraft, uh, some uh, twist ties, which are soft shackles. And for bulk cordage, I carry, this is called donut, and it's a daisy chain technique and I know that's raw cordage that's not been made into anything so that when I pull it out I need to fabricate something in the field all of my um, paracord notice I use bright colors this is going to be reclaimed so I'm going to set up my shelter I may utilize this to set up a shelter but when I'm done I'm reclaiming that and putting it back in the bag bank line is disposable cordage so if I'm having to create something like a lot of lashing, I'm not going to cover that usually. So that I will also have a source in here, but that's going to be left. You know? And if I'm going to put something up here for whatever reason, and I have to leave it, and I'm not coming back ever, I'll use jute. Because a couple of weeks from now, that'll rot off the tree and drop, and I don't hurt the tree. Okay. Then inside, I have a digging right there. I have a large bandana. This I like to use hunter safety arms because this is also a signaling device. So at distance when I open this up to the full size of it that can be seen quite a ways. And by doing this you can do Morse code SOS at distance and realize what you're doing. I carry a small compact hammock this is part of my shelter set, and I also carry in the very bottom a tarp set to go around it. Now this tarp is only a 7x5, 
so I can drape it around my shoulders for rain gear in the emergency, just hunker down, wait it out. But it also just covers the hammock. So I got a marginal shelter set. And then I got my fire kit. My fire kit is in a wax canvas, a wax leather bag that can take a dunk and this can be underwater. I have three sources of ignition. Matches, because I like to be able to strike and have hands free, I can strike it and shove it into a tender bundle. If I'm in heavy wind or something like that, and then I can take two hands to manipulate it, and that match is going to burn all by itself. It doesn't need me to hold the button for a lighter or whatever. There will also be a lighter in here, and then there's a ferro seal rod in here. So I've got three sources of ignition. I've got three sources of tinder. I've got a handful of bone dry shavings, barks, and stuff like that. Then I've also got some of them pucks that are wax pregnated that you tear up and set a fire. Those work when wet. And I've got a block of fat lighter, which works when wet. So I've got three tenders, two of which work when they're wet. And that's my basic fire kit. That This is my basic loadout in here. And I may plug in other things as I need, but this is my basic layout right here. So that, in a nutshell. Oh, and I've got a bandana on the, ha on the handle. I use this to wipe sweat a lot with and everything else. It's just a neckerchief with a slider on it and I can put around my neck. And so that's my basic kit. So my basic kit is generally the same. It's a little more minimalist in, in, re, in regards to that. Mm -hmm. On the top, I like to carry things that I will be using throughout a 24-hour period. If I ever go out into the woods, I have 24 hours with me in the event that stupidity occurs. Um, I'm personally a huge fan of hardtack. This is going to give you, a, a surprisingly enough, a sugar boost that's going to turn straight into, into glucose when it hits your body. And it's going to expand in your stomach and make you full. It's simple. It's, a t it's just a purpose-built tool for a purpose-built job. I have that with me. Um, I also am a big fan of sweet tea. I always have something nice and sweet to, to get rid of the uh, nasty taste of some types of hardtack. Um, and it's just a great thing to have there. Um, carrying a spice kit for me is a big thing because I'm normally, when I'm in the woods, I am typically out procuring food. I'm out either foraging for mushrooms and or wild edibles or other wild edibles or I'm procuring fish or game of, of some type so I will always have something to go ahead and eat with once I procured said game. Uh, moving forward with that I do carry a candle. This candle has an infinite amount of uses. You can preserve any type of fire lighting device any, any uh, sure fire sure flame can all be put here and then extend the life of its of its function you can also use this as a heating source. If you're super cold, you can get your hands warm. That stops you from getting frostbite on your toes. And you can also use this to light fires and repair gear as, as needed. Um, moving forward with that, something I don't see a lot of people carry. This is a multifaceted piece of equipment, is felt soap. It's a little bar of soap. It's got felt wrapped around it. As you use that soap, it's gonna shrink down with the bar that gives you the ability to get your hands clean, get your neck clean if you forget your baby wipes. And if you really need to clean out your, your pot, pan, or whatever, it is felt. It's got a nice abrasive piece of equipment for you to, to scrub down. And if I might interject, those of you that are very allergic to poison ivy, poison oak, etc., it's an oil that's burning your skin. One of those rigged on a soft pouch on your belt with a canteen if you suddenly realize i just got touched you can dash water on it and come up here and right now get it off your skin like that i have a friend that's bad allergic and he carries an army sock with a bar of soap in it hanging on his belt with his army canteen and if he thinks he touched it he'll dash it on that sock and use it to lather and get the oil off and then it will not affect you because it's an oil that we're getting into so that little bar right there would be perfect for that um, this is, again, this haversack for me, um, this is set up for me. I, I typically carry most of my foodstuffs in here. I do carry a German butter dish, mm -hmm. and I keep um, canola oil, excuse me, um, coconut oil in here because you can use it to cook, and you can also use it to cut things like pemmican mm -hmm. so it doesn't taste so gamey. And as well as game fish, that coconut flavor will give that gamey fish a little less of a bite. I carry that with me. Um, I just just this time alone for since I'm out here I have some uh, corned beef in a can just in mm -hmm. case 
Uh, moving into some more municipal sources, I always do carry a compass and a way to start fire on that compass with a, with a uh, magnifying glass. This also doubles as if, you, if you're, for some reason you need to measure your fish, you got it on there and you can always find your way home. Uh, of course, plot yourself accordingly before you get out into the woods. Remember the six P's, guys? Mm -hmm. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Mm -hmm. um, I like coast lights. Coast light is going to be my, my illumination. It is great because you can actually submerge these for up to 24 hours in about 20 foot of water before you really have to worry about anything. I, uh, quick side note on it, I was kayaking once and I had lost this in an early morning kayak, came back the next day, it was still running in 20 foot of water. I went down there and got it and I could see it from there. So um, it, it is, they're, they're very capable and they're very, they're very easy to reproduce if you do manage to destroy this. It's a good piece of gear. It's not a horribly expensive piece of gear. If you did lose it, you're not out a huge amount. But at the same time, if you had to sacrifice it for whatever reason, it is, you know, Please. you're not going to take a $150, one of them super loom flashlights and have to sacrifice it. Trust me, you ain't going to do it. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, of course, here in the South, you're going to have a lot of uh, questionable water sources. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally don't like to take time to boil things, especially in, this, in the summertime here. It is too hot to spend time in front of a fire. And they don't cool off in any amount of time. You'll die of thirst waiting for it to cool off. Correct. With this here, you can go ahead, take that, and just either grab it inside of this bag, which you know is, of course, dirty water, and then filter it elsewhere in the shade. Or you can just go ahead and apply this to many types of bottles, mm -hmm. car uh, camelbacks, anything really, and get your water out of here. Funny enough, you can you can actually use this as a life straw if you got a good enough sucker on you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I, have, I have had to do that before, and it is it is capable, though I would recommend you prepare a little better and not have to get to that point mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, so, of course, the Sawyer Mini. Um, Going after that, I just have two proteins. Proteins are going to help you out. It's going, to, it's going to give you lipids. It's also going to give you, of course, that protein to burn, make you more full longer, so you're not having a heavy meal sitting on you in the summer here. I'll change these out for something a little better, like rice and potatoes in a bag towards the winter time when I want a heavier meal, but right now I just carry some tuna, and uh, you, can do, you can work wonders with tuna with that little uh, pack of, mm -hmm. not incense. Spices. Spices, excuse me, Owen. And speaking of being here at our south, since we have high humidity down here, big mistake people make is they read the standard backpacking stuff and it's carrying the stove and they're making a hot meal every meal. Your core temperature, we're in a 100 degree environment and 80% humidity. You do not want to raise your core temperature at all. So carrying some sort of foods like this that can be eaten cold during the day that gives me the nutrition but doesn't raise my core temperature. Having these where I can take, like you said, not have to boil water, I can get a cool water source and still have cool water to help cool me in this environment. And then at bed, at night, after the sun's gone down, that's when you're going to heat the meal up that I'm gonna eat, sleep with, because my, the temperatures drop and I can eat a hot meal and not raise my core up and make it worse. And that, uh, y'all, just so you understand what he's saying on, on a deeper scale, here you don't have a lot of room for failure, especially if you're like me, I have hyperhidrosis. I'm sure a lot of you have some issue that may hinder you in the southern heat. Getting to that point where you have to worry about that is a horrible idea. So being able to prevent that from happening to begin with and still getting out in the woods is a lifesaver and it is a force multiplier when you start talking about these minimalist kits. Um, I like to smoke pipes, so I do have some pipe tobacco, chocolate flavor. We'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my favorite thing on the planet here, I always carry my 357 when I go out into the woods. It's a versatile firearm and is a very unscary firearm for people that live around me and do not understand the, the, the practicality of firearms. In this kit, I just carry two cylinders of, of reloads, a small pocket kit, and this Finnish oiler, which I'll pull out for y'all. Mm -hmm. I haven't shown y'all this yet, and I think it is. Plus, a... by picking a single action design, they are far more reliable in when they get dirty, wet, sandy. There are few moving parts as opposed to an automatic. 
the 357 you can drop 38 into and you can even hand load down where you can shoot small game like rabbits and squirrels with simply a round ball put into a 38 special case and a low powder charge. On the other hand, with the full bore 357, you can take any game animal in North America in the lower 48 with it. So sheer versatility of it. Bear with me. It's fine. It's not a high speed deploy, but that's good. You won't yeah. lose it. You won't lose it. All right. So that finished oiler, guys. Um, I carry this for a multitude of reasons. One. Any metal equipment that I may choose to carry can be lubricated with this stuff. It's not just for my firearm. If I end up seeing that a belt buckle or something is starting to rust, if I'm in the woods for a week at a time, I have a lubricant to restore that with. And with this finished bottle here, you have a little, little application brush awesome. that makes life a lot easier when you are hot and you don't want to have to pull out your entire kit and pull everything out, you can just apply it, wipe it down with your handkerchief or whatever. Mm -hmm. If worse comes to worse, you could wipe it down with your shirt. Um, it's something to, to give deep thought into if you're going to be carrying a firearm. Uh, all metal is susceptible to the elements, whether it is high carbon steel or the cheapest, crappiest tin on the market. It's going to happen at some point, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to rectify that issue in the field, or you're going to basically just be carrying around dead weight. Um, and I would interject of someone who has carried cap and ball revolvers and other revolvers in the field. Every day, if you're carrying it in a holster, at least once during the day, make it after dinner time or whatever, always pull the gun out cycle the action spin the cylinder make sure rust hasn't set up on an internal spring or something you'll catch it that way it'd be a little tight but you'll break it loose and going but if it's in the same position you've been sweating all day for the last 10 days and you've not touched it it could be gummed up or something and you're not aware of it and then when you had to use it it's gummed up so it seems like they're much more robust than the others but always once a day check it and make sure everything's working properly and then I'll bring us back to our to the famous saying that I like to bring up here is those six P's, guys. If you stay prepared properly, you will not have piss poor performance when it matters. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is a force multiplying word that I preach on this channel, and I'm sure y'all sick of hearing it. But mm -hmm. the more you hear it, the more you'll retain. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite item on the face of the planet, a Bic lighter. Um, I have I carry tons of these. Some of these I have I've usually all seen before. In a waterproof case, I've tied duct tape to them. I've tied other types of cordage and things to them. On this particular outing, I have many ways to procure fire and, and to make fire. And I just felt that on this particular inf and this particular day, this was enough. Um, if I was not going to an outing where I had tons of people and tons of support around me, I would easily carry a third ignition source outside of that magnifying glass in the event that my, that my lighter had went down. Um, a few more items in the kit and we'll hop down to the nitty gritty. I, very, I carry a very small medical kit because I do get into herbal it, situation solving when it comes to medicine. I carry some band-aids because small cuts can become big problems. I carry this green goo. It solves everything. If you, got it, if you get any type of mite, chigger, small cut, big cut, your fingernails can, if you don't clean them, they can get infected. You put this on there, that will solve that issue. And if you ever get into some sort of anything, poison ivy, anything like that, this will help remedy the effects of it. Now, not necessarily solve the problem, but it will redact some of the, some of the symptoms. And then, of course, I like to carry in this little tablet a couple of Tylenols because they are not a blood thinner. Which means if you do get harmed severely and you can't take the pain, you can at least cut the pain back to make a better decision mm -hmm. for what you're going to do next without but not promoting blood. the bleeding. Yes. Yes. And I also carry some antidiuretics because dying from, from diarrhea mm -hmm. will be the weirdest thing to explain to God when you get there. Yeah. Just don't do that. Um, or wherever you're going. Um, the last thing I have at the top of the pack is just a journal. I write my private thoughts in here, and I also write down any information I may obtain that I did not know before I started. Being able to write down little things and take note of little things can pay big dividends if, in case something happens. You may hit your head. You may end up getting super dehydrated and then lose your common train of thought, and you'll at least have some pointers in here. 
that you can read back on and follow by the book while you're doing them if you get hurt or lost to that point. Mm -hmm. The last thing I have up here is just a way in the event that I cannot use uh, my Sawyer or I want to cook some of this food, I have this little cup with me. It, this, this thing is it's got some miles on it. I don't even know how it still has writing on it, but it's still here. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very, very lightweight piece of equipment that you can use for other things like digging if you really, really had to. You can use these to make little bread, bread balls. You can use this to, honestly, if you really had to, set it on the top of a bow drill and go. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is a possibility. Drop two rocks into it, put your palm over top, and it makes a rattle to, for a signaling device. When you can know, you become so hoarse for yelling, and someone is getting close, you can make a racket to attract attention with one. They ring well enough you can hear them at good distance. Before we move on to that, I actually wanted to interject something about my mm -hmm. spice kit that I completely forgot about. I do have some fire starters in here in the event that I need those, but I also carry this whistle for that same purpose. Mm -hmm. um, this whistle is waterproof up to 10 feet, and I carry $100 in there. In the event that I have to break trail, get onto a main road, and I need to go do anything that costs me money, I have $100 to do that with. I carry that in 20s. So that I can issue it out accordingly if someone gives me a ride or if I have to bum anything off of anybody. Mm -hmm. That's something that I don't see a lot of more urban preppers and stuff of that nature doing. And I would really urge you to start considering that because money does make things move. <clears throat> Moving past that, I do have a Vaughn hatchet, which is still in the works. Um, every day I'm making something new go on with it. But I, I choose to carry this over a, over a, a saw because when I leave an area you're more apt to find something snapped up and mangled than you are quick, clean cut. Mm -hmm. And if you want to leave something behind that is less apt to be looked at as a, a definite human interaction, an intentional human interaction, this would be the way to go. You, there are plenty of carving methods you can take to get to that point. And it also gives you the ability to have something to drive, drive anything into anywhere with without suffering, mm -hmm. having to go and make a, a pommel mm -hmm. of some type. Um, a few more things I carry in here are, <clears throat> of course, my pipe here at the bottom. One reason I choose to carry this type haversack as opposed to others that are on the market currently for, for broad consumption is this bottom pouch, no matter what time of day it is, no matter what condition I'm in, I know that if I go to the bottom of this bag, I know that there is cordage and I know that there is a poncho. If it is dead of night, if my eye gets cut out, if whatever, I get hit in the head and I'm half conscious, drop your hand, and when you're at the bottom of the barrel, you'll always have your poncho. And you'll also, and for me, you'll have one of these military-grade stakes that has 14 foot of cord on it. This cordage has many cords if you really need more cordage, but you can easily affect shelter with the poncho. Mm -hmm. and this cordage. Now this also doubles for me as a pry bar. It also can be used to get pots out of the fire if you're not using it for its intended purpose as a stake and you can use it to dig and I'm sure there's a hundred other reasons that you could come to use this. Extremely versatile tool, very lightweight and uh, you just you can't go wrong with it. And these are just military grade stakes. You can spray paint these orange if they aren't already and swing them as a low altitude way of getting somebody's attention. Um, anything is better than nothing, and um, I do need to work on my signaling so that way I can be more efficient in that way in the event that I actually have to signal for rescue. Um, again, the last thing I carry down here is just uh, a pipe. Again, I like to recreationally smoke pipes, so that's what I do. And uh, outside of that haversack, I do, in conjunction, carry my water bottle, which has plenty of hydroelectric powders at the bottom of here as well as a piece of fat lighter in the event that I get separated from this pack. I still have some sort of ignition with my water, which never leaves my body. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, Mr. Thomas, do you have anything else for us? I want to thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Y'all guys, stay tuned for some more. We're, we're still out here, by the way, and uh, there should be more coming from him on his channel. I'll go ahead and leave a link down here in the, in the description below, as well as a link to a few videos of the collaboration down here. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying so far, and we'll see you in the next one.